Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Hey. <laughs> My name is Joe Galicki, and I am a designer at Trulia here in San Francisco, uh, focusing primarily on visualizing real estate data. Uh, I recently finished my uh, grad degree at the Academy of Art. I understand we have a few uh, Academy students here tonight. Hi. Uh, I got my degree in graphic design and uh, through, through my experience in school got exposed to data viz, which is really cool because I love code and I love uh, design and this is my way of, of mashing it up together. So. Uh, Mike asked me to give uh, an intro to D3, uh, and so what, what follows is basically my experience. I've been doing data, data viz for like six months now, uh, so for those of you who are more experienced than me, then take what I have to say with a grain of salt. For those of you who aren't, I'm just six months ahead. Uh, so my goal is just to sort of introduce you to what all this buzz is about uh, D3, why I think it's really great, and hopefully give you some next steps as far as what you can do to, to uh, learn more about it, get started, and then after me, Vadim will help you with some sort of practical stuff. So what is D3? D3, uh, if you visit the website, is a, uh, a technology that allows you to bind arbitrary data to a document object model, or DOM, and then apply data-driven transformations to the doc document. Now, if you're an engineer in here, that may make a lot of sense to you. If you're a designer or non-techie, uh, maybe we need a different approach to that. Uh, basically, D3 is a JavaScript technology that lets you take data and turn it into really cool visual stuff. So what's good about it? One of the things I like most about it is it's built on web standards technology. Back when <coughs> Apple decided that they weren't going to allow Flash on the iPad and iPhone. Um, the writing on the wall was pretty much uh, there for Flash, and JavaScript really started to take off as being the, the de facto uh, way to uh, approach interactive stuff on the web. And D3 really uh, uh, is built around that. And you'll find that it, as you start to get more experience with D3, what you're really getting more experience with is JavaScript, which is a good thing because it's, it's a technology that is really the future of the web, uh, and you can't go wrong investing more time in. Uh, another good thing about D3 is that it works in all modern browsers. It's just sort of uh, something that comes with being based on web standards technology. Uh, and I say modern TM uh, because Internet Explorer is the big Achilles heel. I'll get to more of that in uh, a little bit, but modern being anything in our Internet Explorer 9 or later, or all the other ones, uh, especially the ones that are on, on tablets like WebKit. Performance is pretty good. Uh, even on mobile, this is something that uh, uh, I've sort of started taking for granted. Anybody who's designed for the web, uh, going back at least a few years, uh, knows that, that browser compatibilities are a big headache. Uh, one of the cool things that I found with working with D3 is uh, the stuff actually uh, renders on, on my iPad. Um, and the things that I end up dealing with to try to make it work on those platforms have more to do with the difference between touch interactions and mouse clicking inter interactions. So what's D3 good at doing? It gives you nearly unlimited power and control. If you've tried any of the other um, visualization frameworks out there, and, and there are a number, I'm not here to knock one or the other, uh, you'll find that different, uh, different frameworks have different approaches. One of the decisions that uh, Mike and uh, the people who helped him develop D3 uh, decided on with D3 was to make it really uh, generic and open-ended. Uh, there are other uh, visualization libraries that sort of give you more prepackaged visualizations, you know, here's a chart, you can plug it in by pasting this code. That's great, it, it provides, it's, it can be easier to get stuff into uh, visual format, but as a designer, one of the things I appreciate about D3 is I don't have to inherit all of the design decisions that someone who created, created that chart originally had, so I don't have to inherit all the drop shadows and gradients and, and shiny stuff that, I've, that I found uh, come with a lot of other charts. I can really make it uh, what I want it to be. There are some downsides to that, which I'll get to in a second, uh, but it's one of the things I love most about it. 
V3 does complicated math for you, and this I think is really great. One of the things that, that you find as you work with D3 is that you spend less of your time thinking about how I should actually draw this chart and more time just thinking about how I'm describing what I want to see on the screen. Um, some other complicated math it does for you is that it has some really slick uh, ways of calculating scales dynamically. So uh, you, can, you can create a chart that whose, you know, the height of this chart will always uh, scale depending on what the maximum value in your data is, and it makes it really um, easy to uh, handle all that complex math, which is, involves mins and maxes and stuff, it does that for you. Uh, other types of scales that uh, D3 uh, works really well with is like generating color scales. So if you know that you've got a range of data and you want to assign a certain color bucket to each one, but there are there may be some color values in between that, uh, D3 will 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 handle like picking those what they call interpolated color points in between those scales. And one of the the other. Uh, <coughs> ways that I appreciate the complicated math it does for me is working with geographic stuff. So when you're creating a map, uh, I'm new to uh, geotype visualizations and one of the things I found out is that uh, latitude and longitude does not map directly to X and Y, which I'm familiar with. Uh, there's some complicated math that has to do with the fact that the Earth is a, so is a globe, is a sphere, roughly. Uh, and I want to visualize that in a flat plane. Well, D3 handles that all for you, like, automagically, which I love. And then finally, uh, D3 works on two underlying technologies, which are really awesome, SVG and CSS. If you're a designer and you've been doing any work on the web, you're familiar with CSS. The good news is you can bring a lot of what you learn and know about CSS over to D3 and then use CSS to style your charts uh, in a way that you don't end up having to embed, you know, that complicated stuff in JavaScript. So this is also um, helpful if you happen to be a designer who's not geeky enough to uh, actually be writing all the D3 JavaScript. But let's say you work with someone who is going to be, you know, doing more, most of the programming. They can create it for you, and then you can use CSS then to style uh, their work, and you can you can live in that technology if that's what you're familiar with. Uh, SVG. I won't go into. Uh, a lot about SVG, uh, other than to say that it's one of the um, <coughs> technologies that comes with HTML5, which is really awesome. Uh, Pre-SVG, uh, like the shapes you have to deal with on a web page are rectangles. If you've done any work with CSS, you're familiar with the box model. Everything you're dealing with is squares. Well, SVG allows you to, you know, break out of that and draw triangles and circles and other shapes that can be. Uh, that, that you can uh, uh, imagine. Uh, and SVG works really well with CSS to then, then style those shapes that you create. It's also helpful if you're a designer and you spend time in, in Illustrator. Uh, a, a Illustrator can actually open SVG documents so you can actually bring it right into your, um, an app you're familiar with. Uh, and then the stuff that generates is vectors, and it's if you have that understanding of how vectors and shapes and stuff work with strokes and, and thicknesses of lines and stuff, that'll all translate right into SVG. Okay, I wanted to mention before I I'm going to get into showing you some stuff I've done with D3, which uh, which will probably be a lot more uh, engaging. Uh, but I wanted to point out just some things to watch out for. I'm not going to lie, D3 can be hard to learn. Uh, especially if you're a designer with little or no JavaScript experience. The first time you look at it, you're probably going to freak out. Um, I'm not going to lie, this shit is hard. Um, but I want to say that it is, it's definitely worth it. Uh, as I mentioned before, because it's built uh, on top of, of standard JavaScript, what you learn with D3 will also increase your knowledge of JavaScript which is, I think, a technology that's going to be the centerpiece of interactivity on the web. So all the stuff you learn will be helpful, um, but you should expect to uh, have to you know, start small. Uh, another thing which I mentioned before, uh, the browser support. And uh, let's just be honest, what we really mean is Internet Explorer. Uh, the good news is Microsoft is getting more aggressive about, their, um, about phasing out their old technology. 
they know they've hampered um, per, uh, the progression of the web and are, are phasing out faster. For those of you who were around designing back in like IE5 days, uh, the landscape has changed dramatically and it's really awesome. So when you build stuff in D3, just know that if you have to have it work on older browsers, you probably want to look to something else. Uh, maybe like Raphael JS or something that isn't built on SVG and stuff that's only really supported well in IE9 and above. Uh, another pitfall to look out for is because this is a new technology, documentation could be pretty spotty. There are, like, I've been using D3 for the last several months since, uh, I think it's been several months, I can't remember exactly when it, it came out, because I was using Protoviz, which is, is actually sort of the, the, the godfather of, of D3. Um, and it's increased, like the, the amount of stuff that's been written out there is increasing tons. The very fact that we're having a meetup with a packed house is an indication of how much um, energy there is behind this project. Um, just know that, especially if you are not an engineer or a techie, you may find that a lot of the, the tutorials out there might feel like they're not aimed at you. That's true. Uh, I do have a, um, uh, I have one recommendation, uh, uh, one friend's recommendation that I'll build up in, a, in, in the next slide. Um, but just know that stuff is, it's, it's evolving and so is the, uh, is the documentation. Um, I know that Mike is working on a book, um, sort of manual for D3, so that's coming out soonish. Uh, and I really look forward to that. Okay, so where do we go from here? Here's some, uh, here's some links. Uh, uh, the first one, uh, alignedleft.com, this is my friend Scott Murray, uh, has started writing some really excellent tutorials. And Scott's a designer first. He, he works with code, but he thinks like a designer. And I've really appreciated his tutorials for being aimed at someone who's not a JavaScript uh, rock star and really you know, is, is trying to embrace these new technologies uh, all at once. So I would do, highly encourage you to check out Scott's tutorials. And I know that there are people in this room who have actually put other stuff up on the, on the, uh, on the web too. And I'm not gonna even try to uh, eliminate anyone by forgetting anyone, so I'm just not gonna mention anyone else's. But there, are, there is more stuff, more tutorials out there. And then the other links, let's see, the, there's a D3 Google group, which if you haven't checked out, that can be a great source for searching for stuff that other, other questions that people have asked. I subscribe to it and like daily there's dozens of messages being, post, being posted, so it's super active, great resource. The D3 website on uh, mboss.github.com uh, is where you actually download the software, and there's lots of great examples. Uh, another two, um, well, Color Brewer is, uh, I'll show you in a second one of some of the projects that I've worked on. Uh, Color Brewer, Brewer is an excellent resource for, for inheriting lots of cool uh, color schemes, particularly for working with maps, uh, but it could really be any, any sort of data set that you want, like some advice on what colors could I use, that's a great place to hit up. And then last, a shameless plug, uh, this is uh, insights.truliablog.com is my primary project at Trulia, and I'll show you in a second here uh, some of uh, my projects, but feel free to go there, you can, if you know how to, inspect the source code and, and see how, how we made it work. Uh, so with that, let me switch over for a second and uh, show you some of the stuff I've, I've been working on. Okay. I'll just step through three here. Our, uh, our primary data sets at Trulia have to do with real estate. And so we're, we're constantly taking new data that has something to do with either stuff that we collect or it's relevant data that we get a hold of. Um, here's a visualization that I made, and this is actually quite simple to do in D3. I mentioned before how D3 handles complicated math like ge uh, geographic projections. Uh, this was super simple to create. Uh, you just have to start with the right data. So I was able to get a hold of the, the shape files for the US states, give that to D3, and then just using our data, just map uh, certain color values to states. In this case, uh, we were just looking at, is there a difference between uh, between men and women when it comes to uh, real estate uh, agents and their performance. So uh, this view here shows uh, the, the darker the pink, uh, the more um, women have a favorable um, edge over men. So in this case, Nevada, homes for sale by female agents are 40% more expensive. Uh, 
But if you come down to New Mexico, uh, male agents actually tend to list more expensive homes. Uh, so this was all, uh, like I said, relatively simple and straightforward with as far as D3 uh, goes. Another one that, uh, that we made, we called uh, House Hunting All Day Every Day. And this is where we took all of the, the data we have about when people are searching for a home. So you come on trulia.com, you look at a property, it gets logged in our, in our servers, and then we collated all that, sort of rolled it up into one 24-7 uh, period, uh, and then visualized it as this rainbow grid. Um, and it starts off showing you all states, but then you can sort of tap through individual states and just see, in this case, I was really interested in creating a visual footprint. So, so each state has a unique visual signature based on when people in that state are looking for homes. Uh, and you, it also exposed, exposed some interesting patterns between when people are on computers, uh, traditional uh, computers, versus when people are on mobile phones and tablets. And I believe uh, a lot of the, the stuff I make uh, truly uh, involves like different JavaScript libraries. I believe I used D3 for this one uh, to uh, generate this map, uh, as well as these charts. And as you sort of hover over, the chart on the right is being animated and changed with D3. Um, and then as you switch over, it's the, the pie chart is being generated with D3 as well. The little flippy animation is a special WebKit uh, thing uh, using uh, CSS. Okay, and then the uh, last one I want to show you was, was one that didn't, this ended up being a static uh, visualization, but this was a, uh, an interactive map, and this is also using another uh, JavaScript library called Polymaps, which allows you to sort of do what Google Maps does uh, with making an interactive, an interactive uh, uh, map. And I used D3 then to um, project these, uh, these shapes and then uh, color them based on, in this case, the data is where are singles versus couples or non-single households. Uh, so in the Bay Area, the hot place to be is at Berkeley uh, or uh, in the Tenderloin of Mission. Uh, and the, uh, you, can, you can see where people are growing their families out in the green fields of the suburbs. Uh, anyway, these are just a few quick examples of some stuff that uh, we've made using D3. And I hope, uh, I hope, I guess, for those of you who like, know a bit about JavaScript and just want to you know, learn more and get going, Great. For those of you who are really intimidated by that, I just really want to encourage you. This is a great technology. It has a steep learning curve, but it's definitely worth it because the stuff that you can create, uh, D3 allows you to create stuff that's, that matches your aesthetic vision. And as you, if you can master the technology, you can create really um, anything you want to create using data. So there you go. That's me.